In the opening scene, we see Colton, a traveling rodeo cowboy, participating in a rodeo game. He chases a bull riding his horse and circling a rope above his head. He throws it on the animal and pulls back to tighten the knot of the rope on the bull, causing it to fall. He jumps off his horse and ties its legs before it's able to get up. He wins first place. In the next scene, Colton gets a call and is asked to pick up some toilet paper from town for the camp. He stops by a shop to get the toilet paper and sees a rodeo boycott poster. He also sees a boycott sign at the Potter Creek City Council meeting. At the meeting, Robert Peterson, the town councilman, speaks against rodeo, saying they don't need to have it back in town and that he's talked to the mayor about it. He turns to the mayor and reprimands him for not representing their wishes by bringing the display of animal to town. He is applauded by the attendees. Just then, Colton walks in unnoticed by all except Tracy, Robert's daughter. The mayor asks to speak, since it's a council meeting, not Robert's show, but Robert doesn't let him speak, arguing that he has already spoken by deciding without consulting any council member. The mayor had consulted a member and he shared the same sentiment with him. Robert doesn't care and announces to the people that they will boycott the event even if their elected official isn't on their side. The people applaud him as the meeting comes to an end. Afterward, Tracy's mom, Patty, commends Robert for his speech. Tracy walks up to them and asks her parents if she could go to the diner with her friend, Brittany. Robert doesn't want her to go since he needs help setting up for the farmer's market the next day, but she points out that her younger brother, Luke, can help. Robert is not ready to let her go but Patty gives her permission to leave. She runs back to Brittany's car and sees Colton. They stare at each other for a moment before Colton leaves, smiling. Tracy stares at him and is called back to reality by her friend. They both get into the car and drive off. On their drive, they disagree with their parents and talk about college as well as Tracy's boyfriend, Dylan, who wants to take her to college. Brittany thinks he just wants to keep the college guys away from her by marking his territory, and Tracy agrees with her. Brittany suggests that she breaks up with him, but Tracy thinks going to colleges that are miles apart is a kind of breakup already. They see the rodeo and Brittany decides to check it out, even though she just attended a meeting with the agenda of boycotting it. At the rodeo camp, Brittany jumps into a barn occupied by sheep and asks Tracy to take photos of her. Then, she convinces Tracy to jump in while she goes out to take her photos. Tracy hesitates, but jumps in and surprisingly enjoys the thrill of something she's not supposed to do. A man approaches them, telling them to get out of the barn. The girls run out, giggling. Later on, Tracy and Brittany hang out with their friend, Ava, at a cafe. Brittany informs Tracy that Dylan is outside but she already knows. Ava asks if they're fighting and Brittany states that they are always fighting, making Tracy roll her eyes. Just then, a waitress, Jenna, who's familiar with the girls, takes their orders. Tracy orders a cheeseburger, which is surprising to her friends, since she's a vegetarian. Or rather, mandatory vegetarian, because of her father's beliefs. She stands by her choice but the smiles on their faces soon fade as they see Robert behind Tracy. He wants Luke to hang out with her and is undoubtedly disappointed by what he just heard. He gives her some money before leaving, while Luke leaves for the restroom. Her friends tease her that the burger will be her last meal and she seems to be regretting the choice she made. In the next scene, Colton arrives at the cafe and parks his truck. He decides to put on his cowboy hat. His door slams against another closely parked truck. When he comes out, the owner of the other truck, Dylan, walks up to him. Colton doesn't see any damage but Dylan argues that he can't see anything because of the light. He seems to be ready to engage in a fight, but Colton doesn't want that and tells him that he'll be at the rodeo if he finds any damage. Dylan hesitates at first but agrees. Colton walks into the cafe and finds a seat. Tracy tells Brittany that he's the one she's talking about, and Brittany admits that he's cute. Luke returns from the restroom but Tracy doesn't want him to sit with her. Colton notices that he doesn't have a seat and asks some men to move over. They get annoyed and leave after they've finished eating. Luke thanks Colton and takes his seat beside him. Colton asks why Luke isn't sitting with his sister and the boy discloses that they don't want to sit with him. They place their orders and their food arrives. Tracy sees that her brother ordered a burger and walks up to them. She tells Colton that they're vegetarians, so they'll be leaving now. He apologizes since he wasn't aware and she reminds him that the town doesn't want his rodeo. Colton is aware of that because he attended the meeting and Tracy reveals that Robert is her father. She can't help but smile at him. She takes her brother and walks out of the cafe. A few moments later, it's time for Colton to leave the cafe too, but he sees that his tire has been punctured. In the next scene, Colton arrives at the rodeo camp late at night and is scolded by his boss, Sean. He apologizes and is told to join him at the barn after putting away the toilet paper. His friend, Vince, informs Colton that he was just told that a player in the PPR series got hurt. They show respect to the player before continuing their conversation. Colton is happy for Vince and his friend tells him that he recommended him to his Wrangler rep, and they want to sponsor him, so they'll be coming during the weekend. Colton reminds Vince that the town hates the rodeo but Vince doesn't think it's enough to stop the event. He assures Colton that it'll be fine. On his way to drop the toilet paper, Hank, his other friend, stops him to ask why he took so long to get it. 
Colton tells him about the tire and Hank jokingly asks if he murdered the guy, but Colton didn't see him when he was puncturing his tires. At the Peterson's house, Luke and Tracy arrive. Patty asks if they had fun and Luke tells her that he met a cowboy. He leaves for his room and Patty asks Tracy about the cowboy, to which she replies that it was a guy from the rodeo. Her mom isn't particularly happy to hear that her children met a cowboy. She informs Tracy that Robert is waiting for her in his office, and she immediately knows what it's about. Tracy goes to the office and apologizes to her father, but he thinks she should apologize to the cow that was slaughtered for the burger. Their family stands for something and he's not sure it means anything to her. She insists that it does, she just doesn't think it should be rigid. Robert tells her that she's either part of the solution or the problem. The next day, Colton is woken up by his alarm. He gets dressed and starts working on the barn. When he's done with his work, he asks Hank to cover for him through lunch, since he'll be going to town. Hank thinks he's looking to get fired and decides to help him anyway. Colton goes to the farmer's market and walks up to the Peterson booth, which is supervised by Tracy and Luke, while their mom leaves to make the rounds. He thinks he made a bad impression on her and reintroduces himself. Tracy happily tells him her name as they shake hands. He asks her what's good in the market and she recommends a tofu dog. Just then, Dylan joins them and doesn't fail to let Colton know that Tracy is his girlfriend. Tracy is surprised that they know each other, so Colton sarcastically tells her that they had a nice conversation the previous day wherein Dylan left him deflated. Dylan points out that he doesn't belong in their town, and Colton reveals that he's heard that a lot. Dylan asks Tracy to go with him to get some tomatoes for his mother, and the couple leaves. After they leave, Luke calls Dylan a tool, but Colton already suspects as much. Robert goes to the booth and meets Colton. Colton informs him that he heard him speaking at the meeting. When Robert asks if he learned anything from the meeting, Colton just says they think differently. Roberts believes that rodeo has long passed its time, but Colton argues that there are plenty of cowboys in America. Robert tells Luke to find Patty and tell her that they're leaving. Luke tries to protest, but is shunned by his father, so he leaves to find his mother. Robert warns Colton to stay away from his family since he can't force him out of town and the cowboy leaves. He's about to hop into his vehicle when Dylan drives up to him in his truck. He keeps revving the engine and claims that his truck is the fastest ride in town. To prove him wrong, Colton challenges him to a race later in the afternoon, and Dylan accepts the challenge. At the rodeo camp, Hank informs Colton that he got lucky since Sean went to sign some permits in town. Colton asks Hank to help him, telling him that the guy who deflated his tire thinks he's after his girlfriend. Hank doesn't miss the opportunity to tease Colton about meeting a girl. He reveals it's about a race and it'll be Trigger, a horse, against a big truck. Meanwhile, Dylan is maintaining his truck in preparation for the race. Tracy walks in and isn't happy that Dylan is racing with Colton. Dylan tells her that it was Colton's idea, but she doesn't believe him. He asks if she's worried about him or her friend, Colton, but Tracy informs him that they're not friends, and he continues working on the truck. She's upset that he doesn't care about what she thinks, but he feels the same way, and Tracy leaves annoyed. On the other hand, Colton and Hank set up barrels in a field for the race. Hank warns him that if anything happens to Trigger, he'll slay him faster than any boyfriend will, and so will Sean, before lighting his body on fire. Speaking of fire, Hank suggests they set up a flaming hoop but Colton quickly shuts the idea down. It's time for the race and several cars pull up to watch the game. Colton shows up on his horse and tells Dylan all about the route for the race. Dylan asks what he'll be riding and Colton informs him that he'll be riding a horse. At this point, Dylan thinks he'll win and they get the race started, with the audience cheering. Colton is leading, but is soon overtaken by Dylan's truck, but not for long. Colton takes the lead again. Seeing this, Dylan decides to cheat by not going through all the turns. He also tries to push the horse with his vehicle but ends up hitting a fallen tree, while the horse jumps over it and Colton wins. The crowd cheers for him, including Tracy and Brittany. At the rodeo camp, Sean confronts Colton for the show he put on, but Colton assures him that he did all his work. This doesn't calm Sean down. According to him, everyone on camp did their work, but he always hears Colton's name in town, and he's annoyed about that. In Colton's opinion, he was defending the rodeo, but Sean asks if he wants to answer to the PPR, since Dylan broke his neck during the race. Sean informs Colton that he would not be allowed to ride that weekend, but Colton tells him that he has a sponsor coming. Meanwhile, Tracy and Brittany are at the cafe. Brittany suggests that she visit Colton, but Tracy is hesitant. Brittany makes it clear to her that Dylan lost her in a battle, suggesting the cowboy is good while Dylan is bad. This makes Tracy laugh. Back at the camp, Colton is working when Vince approaches him. He reminds him that the weekend is a big deal for both of them and Colton apologizes. Vince tells him to start thinking about the bigger picture, and that in time, he'll stop doing dumb things. In the next scene, Tracy visits the rodeo camp to congratulate Colton on his win. He informs her that he was scolded for the race, and she admits that what he did was stupid. But Colton thinks it's bigger than racing. It's about a man and an animal working together to achieve a common goal, which is what is important to him. He offers to show her around and she accepts. He shows her 
are the baby calves they use for the rodeo, also known as rodeo steers. She asks if he doesn't feel bad riding and roping them, and he informs her that cowboys don't ride cows, and that they only rope them when they have to. Other than that, the cows are treated like princesses. This information makes Tracy smile. Then they continue their tour around the camp. He takes her to see Trigger, and she teases him, asking if he's John Wayne, since his horse's name is Trigger as well. Later, they sit down to talk and Colton asks if she's taking over her family business, but Tracy tells him that she's going to UC Santa Cruz, where she'll get her law degree and her bachelor's degree in six years. Tracy then asks if he plans on being a cowboy throughout his life. He thinks he doesn't have a choice, since it's what he's known since he was a boy. He's the fourth generation of cowboy from his father's side. But he's not taking over his family's business, since they don't have a ranch. He plans to have a ranch of his own, but for now, he's a traveling cowboy. She asks if he can sing and he admits he doesn't. Tracy reveals that she thought that traveling cowboys sang and played the guitar, a statement that makes him laugh. While she is leaving, he asks if she'd be coming to the rodeo, to which she replies that she wants to, and will see what she can do. He's worried about her going home alone in the night, but she assures him that she knows the road even with her eyes closed. Colton confesses that he wants to kiss her, but she reminds him that she has a boyfriend. He apologizes and thanks her for coming. She bids him goodbye before getting into her car. At the Petersons' house, Tracy tries to sneak in quietly but is caught by her father, who asks where she went. She lies about being at the diner with Brittany, and then went to her house afterward. He reminds her of her curfew and points out that he doesn't want to start checking up on her. So she tells him that he doesn't have to, since she's practically in college. Robert has the last word, telling her that it's his house, so she has to follow his rules, which means she has a curfew. He had heard about the race and asked if she was there. She doesn't deny it and he scolds her, saying that it'll be hard for him to convince people that rodeo is bad if she doesn't stay away from it. She corrects him that she wasn't at the rodeo, but at a race between Dylan and a cowboy. Robert couldn't care less and instructs her to not go there again. Annoyed, she walks off to her room and slams the door. The next day, Colton is woken up by his alarm, but proceeds to continue sleeping. He's woken again by Hank, shouting at him to get up, but he ignores him and lays on his bed. Later, Colton does his job but keeps dozing off. In the next scene, Tracy and her friends hang out by the riverside, with the girls donning a bikini. Colton shows up on a horse and ties the reins to a tree. Brittany sees him and informs Tracy of his presence. She turns around and he waves at her. She waves back before turning to Brittany, and they both laugh. Brittany tells her to go to him, but Tracy promises Robert that she'll stay away from anything related to rodeo. Luke walks up to Colton and commends him for making Dylan look like a fool. Colton asks why he isn't swimming with the others and Luke confesses that he can't swim. To make him feel better, Colton decides to introduce him to Trigger. Luke is scared to pet the horse at first but does it anyway, and he likes it. Meanwhile, Robert is passing flyers for a special meeting at the city's council to the townspeople. The meeting is about the rodeo and Robert believes that the mayor should make a decision they don't agree with. At the rodeo camp, Luke pays a surprise visit to Colton, who welcomes him warmly, but is curious as to what brought him there. Luke asks Colton to teach him how to be a cowboy, which is surprising, since he just met his first horse a few minutes ago. His reason for wanting to be a cowboy is because girls love cowboys, and he got that evidence from his sister, who likes Colton. Colton smiles and decides to show him the ropes of being a cowboy. They brush a horse, clean the barns, feed the sheep and Colton teaches Luke how to mount a horse. Meanwhile, Tracy and her friends pack up to leave, but she can't find Luke. But she already knows where he could be. Back at the rodeo camp, Colton and Luke watch Vince practice riding a bull. Colton tells Luke that Vince is one of their best riders, and that he's a few points away from getting back on the big show. Vince had fallen off a bull once and had to go back to the basics. Just then, Tracy shows up at the camp and scolds Luke for disobeying their father. Colton doesn't see anything wrong with him being there, but Tracy reveals that they're not supposed to be at the camp at all. Luke bids Colton goodbye as his sister drags him away. In the next scene, the Peterson family have dinner and Robert announces that he shared a lot of flyers, so there will be a huge turnout for the meeting the next day. He asks Tracy and Luke not to make plans and they agree. Patty asks if they went to the creek, since it was hot and they confirm that they did. But Tracy calls Luke a wimp for not getting in the water. Luke defends himself, stating that Colton doesn't think so, and tells his parents about his day at the rodeo. Robert isn't happy to hear that his children have been hanging out with the cowboy. He scolds Tracy for not looking after her brother, but she tells him that he doesn't know anything about rodeo and the cowboys. Robert realizes that his daughter has feelings for Colton. He asks if she thinks Colton cares about a small-town girl at one of his stopovers. Before Patty could stop him, the words had already left his mouth. Tracy tears up and thanks him for thinking of her as just a small-town girl, before leaving the table. After she leaves, Patty tells Robert that he took it too far. In the next scene, Tracy meets Dylan in his garage. His truck is in bad shape due to the race and he's fixing it. 
She tells him that they need to talk about their relationship, and how they've grown apart that summer. She's loved him since they were five and their time together was good, but she thinks it's time to call things off and move on. She hugs him and apologizes to him, and he does the same. He tells her that she'll be a good lawyer, probably a divorce lawyer, which makes her chuckle before leaving. At Peterson's house, Patty informs her husband that she's going to bed and he mentions that their little girl is gone. But their little girl has been gone since she started middle school, according to Patty. Robert doesn't want Tracy to get hurt but there's nothing he can do about it. Patty tells him to either get on board, or get left behind, which won't be easy for Robert. Still, she's there to support him. She kisses him and reminds him of how he was once a rebellious teenager. At the rodeo camp, Colton finds out that everyone knows about the time he spent with Tracy. Just then, Tracy shows up asking to talk. Hank teases him, saying that he'll have another long night. Tracy shows him the rodeo boycott flyer for the meeting the next day and Colton finds out that her father is behind the boycott. Tracy tells him that if it wasn't about rodeo, he would find something else. Colton believes that Robert must be sad that his little girl is going to college, but she doesn't think so. She asks if his parents were angry that he joined the rodeo but he says that they had bigger problems. He reveals that his younger brother had passed away when a cow got spooked and he slipped through the fence. His mother blamed his father, and his father disappeared without saying goodbye. This story moves Tracy to tears. Colton confesses that he's jealous of her and wishes his family was like hers. He advises her to not leave her family in a bad way, since she's going to college. Tracy tells him that she wants to kiss him and he reminds her that she has a boyfriend. But she informs him that she broke up with Dylan. The next day, Colton shows Sean the flyer, saying they want to shut them down. However, Sean tells him to do his job and that he has already seen the flyer, so he should throw it away since it's his job to handle it, and not Colton's. In town, Robert meets with a representative from ARA. He tells the representative that they need everyone's support to legally stop the rodeos. According to him, rodeos are the ARA's enemies because they practice animal and they are ready to fight against it. At the rodeo camp, Hank informs Colton that they are having a meeting to shut the rodeo down but Colton already knows this. Hank tells him that he needs to go to the meeting, since he's the only one who cares about the rodeo. Boot Colton doesn't want to, since Sean and Vince are blaming him for making the boycott worse. He reveals that Sean threatened to tell the Wranglers rep that Colton was the one who caused the problem. He knows Sean will be at the meeting, and if he shows up, he'll get fired. However, Hank reminds him that Sean only cares about money, but he's the only one who cares about the cowboys and the rodeo. He finally admits it and asks Hank to cover for him while he goes to the meeting. In the next scene, Sean wraps up his speech by calling the boycott an irresponsible act, fueled by their personal beliefs. Colton enters the meeting in time to hear his last words. Robert mounts the stage and tells Sean that the rodeo is within their city's limits, so they'll have the final say if all the council members vote against the rodeo. He invites the representative from ARA on stage to show the horrific acts the rides carry out on the animals. The representative comes prepared and shows some pictures of the animals being but Colton argues that it's not true. The representative stands by his facts and Robert tells Colton that they've already heard from their side and will now vote. Just then, some cowboys including Hank and Vince join the meeting. Vince interrupts, saying that Colton should be allowed to speak. Colton talks about the love they have for the animals, and how they are cared for more than the cowboys. He also talks about the history and evolution of rodeo. They only rope the animals when they need to, because the animals won't just lay down for a doctor to treat them, they do it out of necessity. Sean is not pleased to see Colton there. Meanwhile, Tracy and Luke are smiling as he gives his speech, but Tracy wipes the smile off when Patty looks at her. After his speech, Colton leaves the audience questioning things. Roberts mounts the stage again and commends Colton for trying to make people think the rodeo was good. But he wonders what other people think about the rodeo. He uses the picture Tracy took at the barn, riding a sheep, as an example of how people think of a animals when they think of the rodeo. Tracy's smile is replaced with a shocked expression when she sees her picture, and is moved to tears as the audience gasps. Patty can only put her head down as her husband continues talking. Colton looks at her shocked at what he's seeing. Tracy turns to look at him, but he breaks eye contact. She runs out of the hall crying, while Colton tries to stop Robert, but Sean cuts him off. Eventually, the councilmen vote against the rodeo and officially cancel it. At the rodeo camp, Sean confirms to the cowboys who stayed in the camp that the show has been cancelled. He then tells the ones who went to town that he's thinking of firing them, but won't, since they have a lot of work to do as a storm is brewing. He appreciates Colton for speaking for them at the meeting, saying that he is a real cowboy. In the next scene, Tracy confronts Robert for using her picture without her permission, and choosing to embarrass her in front of everyone for his cause. Robert blames her for taking the picture. She tells him that it was before she knew about the rodeo and Colton. She leaves to apologize to Colton, even when her father tells her not to. Luke follows suit. At the camp, the cowboys are working on securing the animals in time for the storm. Tracy gets to the rodeo and sees the gate locked. She passes through a small opening to get in. Luke arrives a few minutes after and does the same, and so does Robert. 
Tracy looks for Colton and finds him. She apologizes to him but he's disappointed in her, thinking that she set him up. She tells him that she didn't know he had the picture, and that she didn't know him when she took the picture. Hank calls Colton to join him in securing the animals and he leaves with him. While gathering the cows, a baby calf escapes and Luke decides to run after it. Colton hops on trigger and goes after Luke. Robert and Tracy follow as well, on foot. The storm comes down on them with the heavy pouring of rain. Colton finds Luke, struggling in the creek and throws a rope at him, dragging him out of the water. Robert rushes to his son's side and Tracy hugs Colton. Later on, Robert, Patty, and Luke warm up by a campfire, while Tracy thanks Colton for saving her brother. Robert walks up to them and asks to speak with Colton privately. Tracy tells him to be nice, before leaving them. Robert appreciates Colton for saving Luke and commends his cowboy skills. He asks for a tour around the camp promising to keep an open mind about the rodeo, adding that one positive vote can overturn the council's decision. Colton takes him around the camp. The next day, Robert does the unthinkable. He calls the council to change his vote. He goes to Tracy's room and she asks how she looks in her dress. He tells her that she's an amazing woman, and that he learned that she's old enough to teach him new things about the world. To complete her outfit, he gives her a cowboy hat, which fits perfectly. She hugs him, saying she's his little girl, always and forever. The Petersons attend the rodeo event and enjoy the show. When they announce that Colton is next, Tracy stands up to cheer for him. He tips his hat to her and she does the same. He chases the bull and ropes it, tying the animal down in a matter of seconds and winning first place again. Robert and Patty are impressed by his skills. Time passes and it's evening already, the time for the main event. The commentators announce that it's time for Vince. Colton tells Vince to break a leg and Vince expresses his appreciation for him. Colton thinks he would have done the same for him. Vince puts on his helmet and secures the bull. He rides the bull for a total of 8 seconds before falling off, winning. Colton rejoices for his friend, and so does Luke in the audience. Vince celebrates on the field. After the event, Colton thanks a man as he leaves. Tracy asks if it's who she thinks it is and he confirms that he just won a sponsor. Sean has put in a good word for him and Tracy hugs him. Colton thanks Robert and Patty for coming to the show and invites them to the barn dance. It's not what they expected, as the barn is beautifully decorated, with a cowboy band playing. Tracy and Colton dance to the song on the dance floor, while Luke shows off his dancing skills and his parents watch them. The song changes and Robert asks Patty to dance with him. Luke finds a partner while his parents dance close by. Robert thanks his wife for staying with him, to which she replies by joking that she was in it for the insurance. Colton and Tracy go outside for some alone time. He asks what she thinks about the rodeo and the dance. She admits that she sees why he loves being a cowboy. The mood becomes solemn when she realizes that he will be leaving the next day. He wishes he could stay, but she would be going off to college in a few weeks, so it wouldn't work. He tells her that goodbyes are hard, but there's a good way to do it. Colton takes Tracy on a horse ride. They kiss under the moonlight, before continuing to the top of the hill. 